so our next speaker would be Frederick Wittard um, from ECMW. Frederick also gave a talk during the colloquium. Thanks for that, Frederick. And whenever you're ready, you can share okay, this. Okay, I would screen. share my screen. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so thank you for the invitation. And so I will give now a presentation on uh, focusing on MGO data connections in ECMWF. Uh, I am talking here mostly about the data connections over the uh, uh, Euro-Atlantic weather regimes. So this talk will have uh, three parts. First, I will mention uh, what is the impact of the MGO on Euro-Atlantic weather regimes. Then uh, the representation of MGO on its data connections in S to S models. And the third part will be about, about the modulation of MGO data connections by ENZO. So first part, I mean the impact of MGO on uh, weather regime, your Atlantic weather regime. So that's uh, quite a long history. I mean, there's been many publications on the topic. Um, and uh, from Ferranti, Tino Sadesmuk, and Minetal. And uh, this paper by Casu also showed quite very nicely uh, this impact on the four uh, weather regimes, so negative NAO, positive NAO, Atlantic Twitch, Scandinavia, blockings. And uh, in this paper, uh, Kasu looked at uh, analysis data and for each day where an MGO in phase one, then he looked at the probability to have uh, look at the frequency of those weather regimes. And then he draws this uh, sketch where the shaded area means uh, there is a significant impact. And he, sh and, uh, he show here the, the, the evolution of the probability of the population of those weather regimes uh, relative to the climate from day one to day 15, following an MGO from phase one to phase eight. So the main conclusion here is that the impact of the MGO is mostly on the NAO. And uh, following an MGO in phase three, you uh, we tend to get uh, positive NAO about 10 to 15 days later. And following an MGO in phase six, seven, we tend to get a negative NAO, uh, higher probability of negative NAO to 10 to 15 days later. So this is quite an important impact and an uh, important uh, source of predictability for, uh, for Northern Hemisphere in, uh, and uh, therefore it's quite very important uh, for s to s model to be able not only to represent the MGO correctly, but also to, present, to, to be able to represent this link uh, accurately. So to evaluate if that's the case, uh, this, um, this slide shows uh, uh, teleconnections, so the, so, which are here measured as a composite of the 500 uh, three pentads after an MGO in phase three, that for the extended winter for November to March. And uh, the top left panel represents the set form of the composite in era interim. Uh, the contours are not very clear. So, uh, North America is on the left, Europe is on the bottom right. And then we have this very typical, uh, well, positive NEO signal in uh, era interim. Uh, which if we use an NAO index, if we project it into an NAO index, which has a mean of zero and standard deviation of one, uh, has a value of 0 0.5. So it's about uh, half a standard deviation. Uh, and the bottom panel represents uh, the same the composites, but in, uh, in the various uh, models from the WAP, WCAP, S2S database. So showing that most of them represent the pattern relatively well, all of them go to positive NAO. Uh, but the amplitude is strongly underestimated by all the models. Uh, by the way, the models have been ordered as a function of their horizontal resolution, so showing that so there is a feeling here that the higher resolution models tend to get stronger teleconnections than the weaker, than the lower resolution models. Um, if we look at individual ensemble members, which are the same population of the era interim, not a single ensemble member from all those models get close to 0 0.4 to this value. So, which means that there is clearly a significant underestimation of those state connections in the s 2 models, which means that the models are missing part of uh, the source of predictability. So, the, well, the positive view here is that uh, we can do better. We can, uh, there is a room for improvement in, uh, in the s 2 forecast scale over uh, Europe and North America if we are able uh, to improve those state connections. So, then the next question, uh, another. Uh, uh, what I wanted to show is also the evolution of this uh, tail connection as a function of lead time for longer lead times. Here we are looking at seasonal at the forecast, CIS5 at SMWF. And it shows that uh, top panel is for three pentads after an MGO in phase three, and bottom panel three pentads after an MGO in phase seven. And it shows that as the lead time increase, uh, those tail connections get uh, weaker and weaker over the Euro Atlantic sector. 
on same for MGO in phase seven. So by month four, the titanation in the model start to be really, really weak. By the way, those titanation are computed from the MGO produced by the model, not from, from the observed one. So it means that uh, the connection between those, the, the, MG, <coughs> sorry, the MGO and uh, the NEO start to be lost after a few months of integrations. So the main question is then uh, where does this error uh, come from? And uh, well, uh, the main suspect is of course the representation of the MGO itself. We know the model have, have improved. Uh, they are much better at the MGO representation of the MGO than they used to have 20 years ago, but there is still a lot of issues. And um, if we look, for example, the error in the representation of the amplitude of the MGO, which is relative to error interim. So this is the evolution of this error from days one to day 32. Uh, this shows that uh, if we are negative, means that you have a weaker MGO compared to era interim. Um, and this, this uh, plot shows and that all the models, practically most of the models, uh, tends to have a too weak MGO. In the case of CMWF, we are in the middle of the pack with an MGO which is about 20% too weak by day 30. In terms of error in the propagation of the MGO, uh, this represents the MGO phase error relative once again to era interim, so positive value means that the MGO is too fast, uh, negative value means it's too slow. And we can see that uh, the models tend to get an MGO getting, uh, starting too, too fast and then slow it down and becoming uh, progressively too slow. Um, what is interesting actually with amplitude is that the error is already quite strong already by day one. So it's really an error that is a very short, uh, that is already apparent in the short range. So it's likely that those error must have an impact on the TV connections. Uh, intuitively, if we have a stronger MG, we expect stronger TV connections. And uh, indeed, I mean, if we look at the TV connection in the SMWF model, and uh, if we consider all the MGO events, which are characterized by an amplitude larger than one standard deviations using the Wheeler and then IMS, IMMS uh, index. So this is a declaration we get. And if we restrict it to the stronger MGOs, one which have an amplitude larger than 1.5 standard deviation, we tend to get stronger declaration over the Euro Atlantic sector. And if we go to more two standard deviation, we get even stronger. So if the model underestimates the MGO amplitude, it's clear that this should have uh, an impact and this should partially explain why the MGO connections are too weak uh, in, uh, in the model. Um, but the question is that the whole story and uh, to check that uh, we did an experiment where we nudge the tropics towards era interim. So in this experiment, we have a perfect uh, MGO, representation of the MGO. And the left panel here shows the declaration era interim middle represents the control experiment, and the right one in the tropical relaxation experiment. So we see that the MGO connections are speed stronger, better defined, and uh, stronger positive NEO, uh, but we are still very far from what we get in era interim. So this suggests that those errors in the take connections are likely to come from, um, don't originate only from the tropics, but uh, may come from errors also in the north and extra tropics. So a possible clue of that may come actually from a recent study actually. There have been several recent studies and this is an example here from Lee et al in 2019. Uh, we look at the modulation of the MGO teleconnections uh, by, uh, by ENZO. So they say here they did um, the same study as um, uh, CASU. So that's exactly the same plot as in CASU uh, using a different analysis on different periods, but the conclusion is the same. And uh, the right panel here is if we consider only N in years on bottom, if we consider only line in years. And we see the take connections, uh, the project the impact on the NEO is much stronger during N in years than uh, during uh, line in years. So, stay, so, 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 so this impact of the MG on NEO is much, much weaker. Um, and that's one again, the mechanism that should be quite important for model to represent accurately. So we look at all the ECMDF model. Uh, if the ECMDF model was able to reproduce this modulation, and this was a study from Shao Gaoshin, who visited ECMDF a couple of years ago, last year. And uh, here we look at the as the take connections. So, uh, so 10 to 15 days after an MGO in phase one to phase eight, and we look at the NEO index from this uh, composite 500 composites. So the black bars represent the era interim. So we get this uh, 
positive NEO after phase three and negative NEO after phase seven. White bars are in the model. So this, this confirms what I just said, that the model reproduces fairly well a modulation of the NEO by the MGO, but much, much weaker amplitude. And the white panels represent uh, when we have an NEO landing idea. So as in the previous paper, uh, we get a much, much stronger amplitude of the NEO index after an MGO in phase uh, during an NEO years and during non-NEO years. Uh, but this is something that the model doesn't reproduce well. Uh, actually, if even for phase seven, eight, we tend to get the opposite signal. So it seems that the model fails uh, to reproduce those, this modulation by ENZO, which is quite a big problem because it means that uh, during uh, La Nina years, uh, well, the model may overestimate the take connections, and during any new years, the model may strongly underestimate them. Uh, so an explanation for this uh, impact of the ENZO on NEO, so may come from the impact of ENZO on the MGO itself. But also another hypothesis is also the impact of ENZO on the subtypical jet stream, uh, which is extend much more to the east uh, and, uh, during NEO years and retreat more to the west during NEO years. And this jet stream plays a key role as a pathway for MGO uh, Rossby waves, uh, for MGO generated Rossby wave to propagate to the Atlantic. So errors in the jet stream representation may have some severe impacts uh, also on the representation on teleconnections. So now if we look at the quality of the jet stream in the, the model, the climatology of jet stream, um, this is a tropical jet. Um, here we look at so the climate of uh, U300 uh, zonal wind at 300 hectopascal at different lead times, D0 to 7, A to 14, with 3, with 4. The orange bar represents the history extension in era five, and black bar uh, in the week one, two, three, four. And we see as the lead time increases, uh, the model tends to push the chest stream much, much more to the west, uh, increasingly uh, to the west. But there is even an error of about 15 degrees by week four. Um, and uh, so this, is, this may uh, so affect the, the T connections. And um, if we look at the composite, once again, of Z500 hectopascal, so three pentat after an MGO uh, in phase three, in the left panel is when the, the subtropical jet is more to the west, or right, is when it's more to the east. We see that when it's more to the east, we get much stronger declination over the Atlantic than when it's at the west, which is consistent with uh, era five. So this means that this bias we have uh, in the jet stream may be so detrimental, maybe another piece of the puzzle to explain. Uh, those uh, two weak uh, tail connections. Um, this one actually, okay. this plot here shows actually the difference of zonal wind as we under hectopascal. So the difference between La Nina and La Nino. So we get uh, these very strong negative anomalies in the central Pacific. And that's a biases in January. So suggesting that the model though is a sort of a drifting towards a La Nina state. Uh, this doesn't come from errors in the SSTs. I mean, if we, we get the same errors, if we force the model uh, with observed SSTs. So it's a purely atmospheric error, atmospheric model errors. And uh, so, 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 so as I said, so the model is sort of drifting towards La Nina. And as we have seen during La Nina years, uh, the teleconnections tend to be weaker than uh, during uh, any other years. One or two minutes, uh, so, Yeah, so I, I'm almost finished. So here, so, so this result was with the CMWF model. And then the question is, uh, so what about the other models? And if we look at other models from the s 2 s database, uh, we find that actually most of the models uh, share the same patterns, actually, uh, UK Met Office, uh, Raymond Canada also has the same error. Uh, Meteo France has a very strong error too, uh, GMA, uh, and SEP has the opposite error. But uh, the majority of models also seems to share so this error uh, with those uh, jet streams, so which is uh, located too much to the west. So I will just conclude here. So to say that, uh, so we know from literature, so from previous studies that the MGO has a strong impact on the NAO. Uh, those S2S models tend to underestimate this impact of the MGO on your Atlantic weather regimes. Um, so it's in the free forecast, so fail to capture the strong modulation of MGO connections by ENZO. And uh, those, uh, those errors also may be linked to the, to the location of the Pacific or subtropical jet uh, in the model. Uh, which the model also has a tendency to, to, uh, to move too much toward the west and toward a sort of uh, Lanina state. So that's it, I will stop here. Yeah, thanks a lot, Phil. Great talk. Um, 
Any questions for Frederick? Okay, I had one, Frederick, while we wait for, uh, wait for others. Uh, so your tel the teleconnection patterns you showed, they also resemble the PNA pattern in the Pacific, right? And so how much does the internal variability PNA mode compared to, there's also studies showing that the ENSO projects onto like some part of the predictive mode of the PNA. How much does the PNA pattern modulate this teleconnection of El Nino versus La Nina um, and the MJO NAO teleconnection? Has well, uh, yes, I haven't looked too much uh, at yeah, the, the PNA, but uh, yes, I mean, the, the yeah, the PNA can 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 uh, can also impact. I mean, it's difficult to disentangle everything because it's uh, yeah. PNA can be also affected by Enzo. Yeah. Uh, so, so I don't have an answer uh, to these questions. But uh, I think it's not a simple uh, right. simple to establish. Great. So Zane has a question on the chat. Zane, if you would like to unmute and ask your question. Sure. Thanks, Anish. Um, thanks. That was interesting, Frederick. I wonder, are you guys planning, you know, you could do some sort of similar nudging experiment where you maybe only nudge around the, the subtropical jet or something, or do you have sort of plans to do other experiments? Yes, you could do I absolutely. This hypothesis? Absolutely. I mean, we are doing, uh, we have done already quite a lot of experiments to try to understand uh, where these bites come from. Uh, well, first idea was it come from the tropics itself. We know that the MGO modulates also this uh, subtropical jet, but if we roll out the tropics, actually we get the same error. Uh, it, it seems to come more from an error in the stratropics. So that's something uh, we, so, so we, we not just the stratosphere, there was no impact. Uh, but if we seem to, if we uh, roll out the high latitude, it seems to, to have a more impact. So some impact, but once again, it's a work uh, ongoing, ongoing work. Thanks. The problem of doing a relaxing circular jet is that you impose a bit of solution, but that's. Uh... Hey. Thanks, Zin. Uh, Hemi, you have a question. Would you like to unmute and ask? Yeah, sure. Uh, Frederick, you showed that the MJO amplitude reduces in day one, and I have also similar. Um, uh, results, but do, do is there any um, plan in ECMWF to improve this uh, this quick decay of MGO signal? Uh, we are starting. Uh, yeah, we are looking at it uh, for for from day one. Actually, we we have a new person. Actually, we, we started to, to to look at that with Mark Rodwell. I mean, they are looking at the tendency during the first uh, first first day to try to disentangle, to try to understand where this error in day one comes from. I think if we try, to, if we if we can understand there what happened in day one, I think mm -hmm. it will help a lot to 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 address mm -hmm. this error in the longer range. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yes, it's it's a uh, once again, yeah, there is work on going currently uh, to, to focus more to the very, very short range. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, him. Hi, Lynn, you have a question. Next. Uh, yes, hi, Frederick, uh, nice talk. Uh, there, there are quite a, a few recent studies show that uh, the uh, MGO teleconnection, there is a stratosphere pathway. So I'm wondering uh, if you see uh, uh, there's some models that have high top, uh, better resolved stratosphere as a better MGO teleconnection? Uh, that's a good uh, question. I mean, uh, if we, I mean, we could come back to, to, to this plot. And so here it was ordered as a function of the horizontal resolution. Uh, we could do the same with the high top. I think it's difficult because usually those models which have low resolution are very low top. <laughs> And the model here we perform the best as usually the one which has the higher stop. So uh, where does it come from? So I think to answer your question, I mean, we, we're not sure we can address this question directly from the database itself. Uh, we, we may need to do uh, sensitivity experiments where you, where you increase or, or, de or decrease uh, the, 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 strat the stratospheric resolution. Thank you. Thanks, Helen, and thanks again, Frederick. Really interesting talks.